Welcome, my name is Abigail. I'm a salon suite owner in the Wilkins, Texas, and I wanna to talk to you about opening your own salon suite. So this could be a lot longer video where I talk about like my entire professional background and how I got into even opening my salon suite in the first place, which I could totally make a video on, but I just wanna answer everyone's questions from TikTok on how the heck you even start in the first place. So this is just how I got started. It's not saying this is the right way or the wrong way. This is just what I did and what worked for me. I opened my suite last year in the middle of the pandemic. So I kind of had no idea what was going on because I wasn't planning on opening my suite, but I crammed all of this into two weeks. So if I can do it, you can do it too. So years and years ago, I was just obsessed with listening to hairstylist podcasts. And I listened to like every single one of them. And that's how I found Brit Siva's Thriving Stylist podcast. She is my knight in shining armor. I became obsessed with every podcast she put out and then eventually joined her Thriver Society program. And through putting those programs in place is how I came to a point that I could open my own salon suite. This is not sponsored. I'm just so grateful for that program. It's literally life-changing. So there are a couple things you can do to get started right now, whether you're thinking about opening a salon suite or it's totally your plan. There are a lot of things you can do when you're in your commission salon right now. Building a brand for yourself, kind of figuring out who you want to serve behind the chair every day because you're gonna spend a lot of time with them over your career and then speaking directly to them. If you have a younger clientele, you can focus on Instagram because that's kind of where they hang out the most. Or if you have an older clientele and they're more inclined to use Facebook, then you can target that too. I was able to build up my clientele super fast behind the chair because I had a referral program in place to where I had business cards with all of my information, including my social media on it. And then on the reverse of the cards, I had basically like a gift certificate or a coupon to where I would give my guest a couple at the time of their appointment. And for every friend that they give it to and then they come in to see me, they both get $25 off their next service. It's a small discount, but it gets a ton of people in your chair. And then once they come in and they're blown away by their hair and your guest experience, then they're a guest for life. Through social media, you can just be authentic. I see so many hair Instagrams that's just like hair, 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 hair. And your guests wanna see you and learn more about you. And if they know that you listen to true crime podcasts while you're folding your laundry, it just makes them a lot more comfortable and feel a lot more connected to you. So when they come in, they just feel totally at home. Once you start seeing the effects of that and you're seeing like at least five new guests a month, or you're so booked up and you don't have room for five new guests a month, then I feel like that's a pretty comfortable time to think about going out on your own. There's no harm in looking. So I want you to tour every single salon suite in your area and ask them questions, meet the leasing manager, just get a feel for the overall salon. Just like in a job interview, when they ask you questions, you wanna be asking the salon suites questions also. How long is the lease term? Is it month to month? Is it yearly? Can you send a multi-year lease? And if you do, are there any incentives such as free or reduced weeks? What's included in the rent? You get the room, water, utilities, all that kind of stuff. Do they have a laundry service? Do they have washing machines on site, but it's a small fee? What kind of amenities do they have for guests while they're waiting, etc.? What furniture is included in the room? Sometimes you can have a shampoo bowl and a couple chairs. Sometimes you can have some cabinetry. Just clarifying with each individual room what is included. What changes can you make to the room? Can you paint? Can you do wallpaper? Can you do peel and stick panel? What kind of shelving you can install, etc.? What is the procedure for submitting a maintenance request and how are repairs handled? If your shampoo bowl doesn't have hot water or if an outlet that stops working, how is that taken care of? How do you pay your rent? Is it a direct withdrawal? Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Do you have to drop a check in a box every week? And how are late fees addressed? How far in advance do you have to give notice for moving? Not that you plan to, but if both your hands get chopped off and you can't do this anymore, you have to know what kind of late fees and what the termination process is like. Can I sublet the room? If in a year I'm living this big, beautiful life and I'm only working three days a week and I find someone that would love to work in my room on the rest of the four days, can I sublet and what would that process be like? And if that's going so well, and then you guys both want to work together or you want to hire an assistant, can you transfer to a bigger room if one comes available? Will you have to break that lease and then sign a new one or will your lease transfer over to another room in the building? How do they handle insurance? Does your salon suite provide insurance for you? Do you need to find one of your own? A lot of times if it's not included with your rent, then they'll have a recommendation for your own. Do they have any partnerships with any scheduling or payment processing platforms? At Sola, they're partnered with Gloss Genius to create Sola Genius, where you get all of the payment processing, booking, inventory reports, everything at a reduced rate every week. That's what I use and I'm obsessed with it. It's all I'll ever use. And this is where you get an accountant and a lawyer that you trust. 
you're gonna have a lot of questions along the way. It's so different from state to state, so I can't say how I handled things or how I set it up, but just get in contact with them because you're gonna have some questions along the way. Once you kind of have things rolling and you've made the decision and you're ready to get going, stop and open a business account. Before you do anything, you wanna start separating your personal expenses from your business expenses. And the easiest way is to just put it all in a completely separate account. You can use the bank you have now if it's easiest. You can look at different banks. They all have different like qualifications for having business accounts. So just look around and choose what works best for you. This way you can put an investment, you can put a chunk of money in that business account for your startup costs for the salon. And that way you have all of your business expenses in this separate account. You need to create a budget for opening your room, not only for color and retail, but just kind of decoration and if you need a dryer and there's a lot of things that you don't think of. So even if you're working behind the chair in your commission salon and you're like getting an idea of what you need to buy for your salon suite, you can just take a look at every single thing you touch throughout your day and think about purchasing that for yourself. Then you can invest in your color intro kit and your retail intro kit. For some lines, you can go into this beauty supply store and buy four shampoos and go home with them. For some lines, you have to buy an intro kit to be able to do that. Ranges from anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand for big salons. So you can just choose what works best for your budget and what you need to start up. In Texas, I applied for a mini salon license. This allows me to work in the salon suite that I'm renting and my cosmetology license covers me as an individual to work in the room. And to sell retail in Texas, you need a sales and use tax permit. It's something that you file with the state of Texas, you get it in the mail, and then you're just able to charge retail tax on the products you sell behind the chair. And the moment you take in a dollar, you need to save for taxes. There's a bunch of different tax classifications that you can do, but no matter what, start saving for taxes now. It's another thing that's so different with every state, so you just have to ask your accountant, but save for taxes and then a little bit more on top of that, just so you're keeping a profit from your business. When I had my business bank account and I was buying everything to start up my suite, I also got QuickBooks Self-Employed because that automatically hooks up to your bank account and then it categorizes every expense as if you're buying a color intro kit, it's materials and supplies. If you're going Nike and buying furniture, it classifies it as furniture. And then it breaks down your expenses, your income, and then your total profit. And then it also calculates your quarterly taxes for you. And you can even do your taxes by hooking up QuickBooks to TurboTax. So it handles everything for you. And then decide how you wanna pay yourself. Because you're having two separate accounts, you're gonna need to have like a payday every once in a while and just figure out what that looks like for you. If you wanna do it weekly, if you can hold yourself accountable every single week running your numbers and paying yourself, or if you'd rather do it once a month, run your numbers, do it that way. And then the percentage to pay yourself. This is another thing that I really love Thriver Society for. I had no idea how much to pay myself, what my expenses were every week. I was just kind of winging it. So through that, I was able to basically make a calculator for myself so it takes all the guesswork out of it every week and just pay myself through that. And then market the crap out of yourself. Once you're in your suite, it is all up to you. You are your own business, but that just makes the reward so much better once you have people in your room. So go all in on Instagram, Facebook, do local marketing. There's just so many avenues you can take, but just get your name out there. Make it a party, make it a celebration that you just opened your own room. You want to scream it from the rooftops and people will notice. So I feel like I can go on and on and on into specifics about everything I talked about in this video, but let me know if you want me to go more in depth on anything. I'll make another video about it. Just comment below and I'll see you guys soon.